The teeth should be touching in the absolute normal biting position. Most people, not all, but most people have one position where they bite in teeth, but all the teeth touch together. Body postures affect maxilla and jaw. It seems that body posture and oral posture are connected. The simplest way to describe it is to say that as you lean forward, I think Benny Solo and Lisa Lot Sanson did some good work on this. MA surgery for orthodontics and crossbite and sleep apnea. Okay, so the next post is teeth contact thing while mewing is really confusing and discouraging. So are you supposed to contact them? If so, is it only the molars? What does them lightly touching mean? When I try to lightly touch them, they just tend to tremble a lot. Also, part of me is afraid I'll end up clenching, grinding, bruxing or something TMJ related. That's temporomandibular joint. I just also find it's really hard and uncomfortable to mew with teeth closed. Any advice would be really helpful as I'm only just beginning to mew. So the advice here is that the teeth should be touching in the absolute normal biting position. Most people, not all, but most people have one position where they bite into, but all the teeth touch together. So if you have a set of your upper and set of your lower teeth, when you feel them together, you can feel where they bite together. And that's where you should be putting your teeth together. This is not everyone, but for most people, the molars and the incisors and the canines and premolars will all touch together in this position so that all the teeth are comfortably together in their everyday normal position. Now, the way we stop the trembling, the way we stop the clenching and the grinding is the tongue is fully on the roof of the mouth. And I do a video where I call, I call the cause and cure of clenching and bruxing, where I go into this a little bit more and we can leave the link here. But that would go over some of this. Now, the biggest problem I find is when people don't have enough tongue space. Because if you don't have enough tongue space, it's very difficult to have your tongue on the roof of the mouth and the jaw clenching muscles holding your teeth together. Because if you have that correctly, you'll be balanced. So the jaw clenching muscles are pulling together, the tongue's on the roof of the mouth pushing apart, and it's very like what's going on in my biceps and my triceps as I move my arm up and down. They're blood brothers, they're antagonistic muscles, they work together. If you can reprogram your those muscles to wake up their relationship, then you have what we refer to as butterfly bite, and you bite comfortably into your normal biting position without clenching and grinding. However, if you lack the tongue space, it'll be uncomfortable to do so, and that will lead to a lot of these problems. And that's another chapter, creating more space to help you to mew. However, see what you can do if you do get the mewing app, if you go to the section where I talk about the Valsalva shift, then you can see what I'm talking about and how you can check that you have enough tongue space. If your teeth are trembling slightly when you're trying to bring them together, then I think you don't have a proper suction hold with the tongue on the roof of the mouth. Because you've got that proper suction hold and you're fully raising the back third of your tongue, you'll bring your teeth together and I don't think you should have those problems because those muscles should be properly in their antagonistic pairing unless you radically lack tongue space. And then you should be thinking about getting more tongue space to progress in your mewing journey or play safe and don't. So it's a question. Body postures affect maxilla and jaw. I read that body posture has some effect on the jaw and can cause a double chin, even for someone with low body fat. That made me wonder, does poor body posture, forward head posture, rolled shoulders, pelvic tilt, affect the maxilla too? I'm trying to work on my body posture for health reasons. I wonder if it could affect the maxilla and jaw. If so, how much? Would it not affect facial bones if I'm not a teen, 25? Thanks ahead. Okay, so body, it seems that body posture and oral posture are connected. The simplest way to describe it is to say that as you lean forward, I think Benny Solo and Lisa Lot Sanson did some good work on this. 
and good published work. And there is a clear relationship. And I've seen people who have been working hard on mewing and they've hit a wall and then they've moved to working on their body posture and they've managed to go further, go so much further. And I often suggest if you are mewing and you've, you've hit a wall, move to body posture. If you hit a wall there, then come back to mewing and you can incrementally make gains one on each of them. And that's a really good effective thing to do. And if you do get the mewing app and you can see the bit on the um, abs walk. If you grasp the abs walk and understand the deep frontal line, you can really put some interesting things together. Now, this is the question posed here. Does body posture affect the maxilla too? Well, I think it does. I think if you've got bad body posture, in particular a forward body posture, then the tongue comes down from the roof of the mouth. It's not up there to support the maxilla. And yes, I think that can affect the position of the maxilla. I'm trying to work on my body posture for health reasons. And I wonder if it could affect the maxilla and jaw. And if so, how much? Well, at 25, I don't think you're going to get much change in the actual physical shape of your maxilla in the short term. You may in the long term. Mewing hasn't been going long enough for us to really fully understand that. We don't have enough documented cases. But I think this could really help your health, in particular your airway. And slowly, slowly, slowly over time it could affect your facial bones. But be aware, as you start to improve your body posture, chin tuck and stand up straight, initially your tongue is going to start to encroach on your airway and so that can be negatively affecting your airway and it's only in time of gaining change and muscle tone in the muscles of the throat area that you then start to open your airway and get improvements but sometimes you can go through a period of encroaching upon your airway first. Remember this is not a quick fix, this takes Time. Um, so I've gone down to a post saying removable palatal expander. I recently got a removable palatal expander. For the first three hours, it didn't hurt, just felt weird. However, coming down to three hours and 30 minutes, my left tooth, the sharp one, canine, started hurting super badly. Is this normal? How long does it take for the pain to go away? Well, when I fit a new brace, I usually say to people, it will be worse the second day. New braces are gonna be uncomfortable. It's rare that any brace is perfectly, perfectly fitting in a mouth because there's elements of um, inaccuracy in the process of designing and constructing these appliances. But the braces, when they're fitted in the mouth, they will, to some degree, move the teeth a little bit and that will be uncomfortable. That will go away as the teeth move. And I think on the, the second day of having brace can be worse. The third, fourth and fifth day, they should it should get progressively better. Clearly, I'd like love to see what rate you're turning at. Well done on starting some form of therapy. I hope it goes well for you and all the best. Don't forget, all the way through this process, you should be really working on your oral and body posture and function. Okay, so we come down to question. MA surgery for orthodontics and crossbite and sleep apnea. A 21-year-old male diagnosed with a crossbite as well as obstructive sleep apnea. My sleep issues have become too severe over the years and they are seriously impacting my daily life. After visiting two orthodontists, both suggested Invisalign and rubber bands would be enough. However, I don't believe this would solve all my problems as the root seems to be the draw itself. What are your thoughts? I would totally agree with you. If you have sleep apnea, you may find skeletal expansion will help. Clearly, there's no direct absolute relationship with this. And also, what we've found from children's studies is that simply by opening the width of the upper jaw has multiple benefits beyond just the effect in the upper jaw, possibly because you make space for the tongue. As the tongue goes in the roof of the mouth, it moves up out your airway and that can be really effective. Now, Invisalign could create that effect, but I think you're gonna get a better effect if you, you can use something that will try to split the maxillary suture and actually widen the two maxillary halves away from each other, because that will open up 
the skeletal, the bony element of the anterior nasal cavity, and as that opens it up, it would dramatically reduce the resistance within the nasal cavity. Of course, that also provides more space for the tongue, so the tongue can come forward out the airway. And there's some evidence that the maxilla even moves forwards, so opening up the pharyngeal airway as well. So there can be some great benefits from expansion. But at your age, at 21 years old, I would almost certainly recommend using the TAD-based Marpe. Now, you asked specifically about MMA surgery, and I think that it could do this. My, my concern about surgery is that that's often used to move the maxilla forwards, physically moved it forwards. Sometimes you can surgically widen the maxilla, but it seems that you don't get the same effect from widening the maxilla in an intact whole situation than when you do surgery where you cut it up and widen it artificially. It seems that that doesn't get as good effect at widening as if you do it with something like Marpe, you know, a screw based on tads. So my advice in these type of situations is consistently to do the Marpe type tad based expansion, expansions with screws going into the top jaw and having completed that then you could have bimaxillary surgery. I think that's a very good one-size-fits-all if you want type of procedure.